Hello from Georgia. I'm Kay Chacha. I'm the founder of the Sector 3 Hub for Development and executive director at the CDD, which is a center for development and democracy here in Georgia. I am a member of the steering committee of the World Movement for Democracy. And within the steering committee, it was my great pleasure and privilege to serve as a member of a subcommittee on democracy courage tributes for reviewing nominations and making final recommendations for the tribute recipients. It was a challenging but very rewarding process learning about the inspiring, breathtaking work that our fellow civic activists are doing around the world. Movements that are on the front lines fighting for democracy and human rights, despite all the challenges, including pandemic. Democracy is in decline. Democratic spaces are shrinking almost everywhere in the world. But at the same time, we see so many courageous and sustained democratic movements in every corner of the world. And we want to take the moment to recognize and celebrate this resilient and movement of civil society activists that are around the world making amazing, amazing job. At every global assembly, the World Movement for Democracy gives a special recognition to democracy movements that have demonstrated extraordinary courage um, you know, despite the challenges that they face. I had the pleasure to attend Democracy Tribute Award ceremonies in the past, which were truly the highlights of the assemblies as we stand together, empower each other, recognize and celebrate those important work that all our fellow civic activists are doing across the world, fighting for democracy and for the better world for everyone. Previous you know, recipients of the tributes include several amazing groups like photojournalists in the Philippines, capturing images of extrajudicial killings, women's movements in Iran, advocates for the rights of the sexual minorities worldwide, investigative journalists in Africa. Well, along with the Hartford Foundation, we are delighted to present four courage tributes at this global assembly. My fellow steering committee members, Ana Gomez of Portugal, Hassan Khan of Pakistan, Gina Romero of Colombia, uh, Hans Stephenhau of Haiti, and Maiko Ichihara of Japan will present these tributes for this year. Well, before presenting tributes, I now invite Jane Kurzman and Bob Miller of the Hartford Foundation to make their brief remarks. Well, thank you all for attending participation. I'm looking forward to seeing you all face to face soon when this pandemic is going to be over. Thank you, and let's move to Jane and Bob. Hello, and greetings from New York City. I'm Jane Kurzman, and I have the honor of being on the board of directors of both the National Endowment for Democracy and the John B. Herford Foundation. The Herford Foundation has long been a supporter of the World Movement for Democracy and of its Democracy Courage Tribute Awards, which we are about to confer. I myself have had the privilege of attending six World Movement Assemblies in person. And they have always been extraordinary experiences. I always come away from them with the utmost respect for the dedication, perseverance, and courage of so many of the participants. Indeed, previous particip there are previous participants who are in prison today because they challenged those in power and spoke the truth. And we always remember your colleagues who have paid the ultimate price as a result of their efforts promoting democracy and freedom. I am very sorry that we were not able to meet in person this year, but we still did manage to have a meaningful virtual program. I will, however, look forward to greeting you in person at the next assembly. In the meantime, whether virtual or in person, the Hereford Foundation stands behind you, celebrates your achievements, and supports your ongoing efforts. I now have the pleasure of introducing my colleague, Robert Miller, who is the president of the John B. Hereford Foundation 
and also a former NED board member. It's an honor for me to greet you on behalf of the John B. Herford Foundation. John was an extraordinary man who first made his mark in the financial industry. He was a committed internationalist a significant philanthropist and a longtime board member of the National Endowment for Democracy. Together with Carl Gershman and others, he was instrumental in encouraging the NED to create the World Movement for Democracy. The Biennial Global Assembly of the WMD brings together leaders of democracy movements from all parts of the world to build solidarity and provide an opportunity to learn from one another. We at the Herford Foundation are very proud of our support for the world movement, and in particular, its Herford Youth Fellowship Program. These fellowships are much sought after and provide youth democracy activists with leadership skills to prepare them to become global democracy leaders. Risham Wasin of Pakistan and Margarita Myra of Chile, who spoke during the very first session of this global assembly, were Herford Fellows. And it's gratifying to see the leadership roles they play in their respective organizations. I, for one, believe it's critically important that young people of the democracy movement be given the essential skills and resources so that they are prepared when the time comes to lead the movement in a sustainable democratic transition. In past global assemblies, the Herford Foundation has hosted a dinner on the last day of the assembly to celebrate the participants' hard work and to recognize the extraordinary courage demonstrated by democracy movements operating in particularly difficult circumstances. I'm sorry that we cannot be together at that dinner as in the past to directly and not virtually assure you that the Herford Foundation stands with you. Please know that we celebrate your achievements and will continue to support your ongoing efforts on the front lines of freedom's struggles. Your work and courage are an inspiration that does not go unnoticed. I thank you for your attention and look forward to greeting you at the next Global Assembly in person. Thank you for inviting me uh, to your beautiful event. I am uh, very pleased and honored to participate with my voice uh, and my music. I would like to say that uh, democracy to me means the freedom to be ourselves, the freedom to be true to ourselves, to our ideas, to our cultures, to our communities, to not be silent in the face of oppression and above all, to have the hope in the future that is needed to carry us forward and to enable us to take risks when everything is on the line. The song that I'm going to share uh, is called Hulm, which means a dream. And um, it's a song about the fact that the light and the darkness can be intermingled and that even if our steps forward are followed by steps backwards, we can always dream of a better tomorrow. But 
My name is Zafrullah Khan. I sit on the steering committee of World Movement for Democracy and I represent South Asia. I hail from Pakistan and I continue my work on democracy related issues in Pakistan. It is a tradition at the world assemblies that we honor and acknowledge those who take risk and still contribute for keeping the flame of democracy high in their societies. And it is my honor to introduce uh, a group of independent journalists from Middle East and North African region. Uh, after Arab Spring, these friends have worked, uh, sorry, uh, after Arab Spring, these friends have worked quite uh, bravely on many issues related to democratization in the region. 
This region also figures quite low in the press freedom index of reporters without border and the countries which are in among the 25 lowest ranking countries includes Bahrain, Egypt, Libya, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and Yemen. Uh, in this Democracy Courage Tribute, we have picked three prominent voices from the region and they have sacrificed in their own ways. The first one who paid the highest price, the ultimate price is Hishamul Hashmi of Iraq, a very inspiring example of independent media and he paid the ultimate price. We acknowledge your sacrifice. The second aspect is those work and lose their freedom. And I mention Egyptian journalist and human rights defender, Asra Abdul Fatli, a very outspoken journalist who lost her freedom in October, 2019 and still linguishes behind the bar and as a pre-trial prisoner in Egypt. The third one is an institution, the Syrian Center for Media and Freedom of Expression that continues to raise its voice, continue its struggle despite the Assad regime's efforts to close their office and block their ability to speak to the Syrian people. So in that way, we acknowledge and are privileged to offer democracy courage tribute to these three prominent voices from the Middle East and North African region. Much of the Middle East was always and has become increasingly hostile to the idea of independent journalism. The World Movement for Democracy would like to use this Democracy Carriage tribute to honor the bravery of independent journalists and defenders of free speech who remain committed to press freedom despite persecution and great personal risk. Almost every week, if not every month, there's a new video that emerges of an Iraqi activist, uh, civil society leader or journalist being either arrested or killed, assassinated. في مصر أكثر من 600 موقع إلكتروني مراقب ومحكوب وكان من أبرز هذه المواقع وأولها هو الموقع الخاص بصحيفة التحرير اللي كانت إصراء بشكل مباشر مسؤول عنه. Your word, your own word, it's your right. It's not a luxury. To those who paid the ultimate price, to my friend Hisham Al Hashimi. Hisham Al Hashimi was my friend, uh, an Iraqi journalist, researcher, commentator, um, who was very active um, based in Baghdad. He's from Baghdad. He was interested in politics, security studies. Uh, and really just trying to understand why his country was unable to develop in a, in a way towards stability, towards security. If you read most reports, particularly in the security sector of Iraq, you'll see Hisham's fingerprints, you'll see his legacies. A better understanding of some of the armed groups in Iraq, you know, he became famous for understanding of Daesh and how Daesh was, and then he moved to, to, to work on other groups as well, including the popular mobilization units and other groups uh, throughout the country. So in terms of, he has an impact in academia for people who have tried to understand Iraq, but he also had an impact if you look at on the ground. Many of the young, I remember when I used to walk with Hisham around, there would be uh, some student, some kid show up, Dr. Hisham, you know? And I'd ask him later, how do you know? He's like, oh, I just taught him in a course. If you look at the posters, he's considered one of the, the martyrs of the October 2019 revolution. And it became normal for him to receive death threats. 
as many of these militias viewed him as the embodiment of, of, of both the elite, but also uh, of, of giving information particularly to foreigners, but also supporting the protesters, and most importantly, connected to the Iraqi government. The video is there, you can see there's a video very clearly what happened. He, he, he saw some people and on his way home, just outside his home, uh, and caught on camera, uh, the assassins came uh, and, 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 you know, shot him in his car uh, and, and his, his wife and kids, three boys, come out uh, and, and, and see, you know, their father um, shot and bloody and event he later died in the hospital. Those who killed him have not been caught. To those who lost their freedom. To my friend, Israel Fateh. إسراء زيها زي أغلبنا كن كانت طول الوقت مؤمنة إن الثورة ديت هتنجح دعوتها للمشاركة في 2011 كان هدفها الأساسي ورؤيتها كانت الأساسية إن الناس يبقى عندها وعي كبير جدا بحقوقهم القانونية والدستورية طبعا ما ننساش إن إسراء عملها الأساسي لما بدأت كان بتشتغل في المجتمع المدني بعدها انتقلت للعمل الصحفي في صحيفة وموقع التحرير كانت مسؤولة عن المحتوى الإلكتروني في الموقع طبعا إسراء مر بتجربة صعبة جدا خلال عملها في صحيفة التحرير نظرا لأن السلطات المصرية مارست رقابة مباشرة على كل الصحف والمواقع الإلكترونية وتم حجب موقع التحرير بالإضافة أن الصحيفة نفسها تم منعها من الصدور إسراء قبض عليها يوم 12 أكتوبر 2019 تم توقيف سيارتها والقبض عليها من قبل أفراد في زي مدني إسراء ظلت في حالة من حالات الاختفاء القصري لفترة طويلة اتعرضت لها لكل الصنوف التعذيب اللي ممكن حد يتعرض لها قاموا بتعليق إسراء من أيديها وتعذيبها وضربها بشكل عنيف جدا حتى أن أثار الضرب والتعذيب كانت على جسمها لما تم عرضها تاني يوم أمام النيابة واللي حتى الآن لم يتم إنصاف إسراء فيها ولم يتم تقديم الجناء للقضاء حتى الآن رغم أن شدة الإجراءات المفروضة على إسراء وأنها لا تلتقي بأي شخص ولا تتريد ولا تحصل على الحقوق الدنيا في 2020 اتفاجئنا أن إسراء تم ضمها القضية الجديدة هي القضية 855 واللي متهمة فيها إسراء بالانضمام لجماعة إرهابية للقيام بجريمة إرهابية من داخل السجن قضية جديدة تبدو شديدة العباسية بتثبت أن السلطات المصرية عازمة على استخدام القانون وتوظيفه بأي شكل ضد المدافعين عن حقوق الإنسان والصحفيين والإسراء واحدة منهم وبتدفع ثمن غالي وكبير بسبب نضالها السلمي من أجل الديمقراطية والحرية To those who continue to struggle to the Syrian Center for Media and Freedom of Expression to SCM. In a shortcut, I'd say SCM is a vision of a man. Um, his name is Mazen Derwish. He decided to, to, to create SCM to, as a space uh, where he can do support for political prisoners, for journalists, monitor freedom in Syria. The, the situation of journalism in Syria enforced us a lot to rethink about about those new terms, about who's the journalist, who's the media worker, who's the media activist, who's, you know. Men and women after 2013 start to, to, to face the danger of being target from all parties. So military group called Jesh al-Islam is accused of, of being in charge of kidnapping Razan Zaytouni and Nazim Hamadi and Wael Hamadi and Samir al-Khalil. And ISIS uh, responsible for, for kidnapping a lot of women media workers and men. Some are Saleh and, and, and government continue to do what they always did. <laughs> targeted journalists and media workers, caricaturian and everyone. What's unique about Hisham uh, is the fact that uh, he was very knowledgeable with, and he had a lot of data that he was sharing with everybody and, and especially the journalists who report on Iraq. They used him as a, a main source for information that is very hard to get by. 
And given that he is so easy to access and he was so open to share his knowledge, he impacted most of the reporting done on extremist and jihadist groups in Iraq and Syria. And, and that, that impact has been so big that you see these days after his departure, uh, most of the reports are not as adequate as it used to be, given that Hisham was alive. Uh, uh, he was very much loved by everyone, and that made it easy for people to talk to him, and he made it easy to relate to him. His appearances on TV stations and frequently on Arabic channels, especially the satellite channels, he was frequented on almost all the major uh, satellite stations, and he made the news richer. People and the who's who of Iraq used to follow what he says and listen to what he says. Uh, the impact that he had was absolutely immense. And for me, I've seen a lot of people get assassinated, get killed in Iraq, but I have not seen the outpour of grief and anger of Hisham's assassination. And, and that only is a testament to what Hisham represented to the international community, as well as to the uh, media community for what he has offered and what he was doing on the field. Let me start by thanking the World Movement for Democracy for this award on behalf of Isra Abdel Fattah and at least 26 other journalists who were in jail at the end of last year because of their work, according to the count of the Committee to Protect Journalists. Isra has been in jail now since 2019 in October after demanding that the Egyptian government release political prisoners at least 4,000 at the time who uh, protested against the government corruption. Uh, that has been the story of her life before she uh, impressed the world as being the Facebook girl who mobilized Egyptians to topple Egyptian, former Egyptian President Mohammed uh, Hosni Mubarak in 2011. She has impressed Egyptians with mobilizing the first national strike uh, using only uh, social media and Facebook, uh, hundreds of thousands stayed home in support for the labor workers in 2008. Uh, her movement uh, that she co-founded, April 6th movement, had uh, not just been able to pressure the government on corruption, but on uh, issues that had to do with political freedom and freedom of speech. And she uh, has been imprisoned in many ways because of her defense uh, about uh, those who've been held in uh, custody arbitrarily. And now in her latest detention, she had made allegation that she was tortured in custody. And even though the prosecutor have said they, they will look into those allegations, uh, a year and a half later, nothing has happened. We, uh, as Egyptian activists and also as journalists have been inspired by Sra Fattah since 2008. And her courage and sacrifice uh, helped carry uh, many uh, favors for people who have been demanding democracy in Egypt and around the Arab region. Uh, we hope that her courage and uh, sacrifice will inspire you to continue to demand her release today and to hold uh, those who might have uh, tortured her in custody accountable for what they did. Greetings from Lisbon, Portugal. My name is Ana Gomez. I lived the first 20 years of my life under dictatorship here in Portugal. That's why when I see a dictatorship, I recognize it. And that's also why 
I join efforts with all those who want to fight for democracy. We need this solidar cooperation to overcome dictatorships. Today, I'm honored to speak here to present the World Movement for Democracies, Democracy Courage Tribute to Advocates for Democracy in East Turkestan, Hong Kong and Tibet, working to build solidarity and resilience against China's authoritarian measures. We always knew the oppression that the Uyghurs and other ethnic minority groups in East Turkestan or in uh, otherwise known Xinjiang. For many years, gross human rights violations in the region have been reported. In the past two years, more recent reports with details suggest that up to 1.8 million Uyghurs and other Muslim, Muslim minorities are in 380 political education camps. The Tibetan community is also another group that has been for long forced to flee their homeland. In Tibet, their religious freedom, speech, movement, and peaceful assembly are severely restricted with critics of China's repressive policies subject to intimidation, imprisonment, and use of force by security forces. Democratic space in Hong Kong has significantly shrunk since the introduction of the national security law in June 2020. A score of Hong Kong democracy activists have been detained while many have fled. Many Hong Kongers who recently fled to new homes in other parts of Asia Europe and North America are now organizing themselves, advocating for a freer Hong Kong. Many activists are courageously reporting abuses, mobilizing democratic voices, and countering China's disinformation efforts to the extent possible within those harsh political environments while those in exile are increasingly being united in solidarity. What we see today is these exiled communities from East Turkestan, Tibet, and Hong Kong increasingly working together. They collaborate on campaigns to expose human rights violations and work with the international community not only to recognize these violations, but also introduce accountability mechanisms. Youth activists from these communities in particular are working together on the ground to reach out to their host communities, to inform about the situations back home, as well as promoting their cultures. What does it mean for a nation, for a people, to want democracy? What does it look like for young people to depend self-determination? I'm Julie Millsap and I'm with the Campaign for Uyghurs. We are a grassroots organization that was founded in 2017 to advocate for the human rights and democratic freedoms of Uyghurs and other Turkic peoples who are being oppressed by the Chinese regime. Hong Kong Watch was founded in London in 2017 when a small group of us came together because we could see that Hong Kong needed a voice. Over the last three and a half years, our very small team has made an impact around the world completely disproportionate to our size. 
My name is Pema, and I'm the Campaigns Director at Students for Free Tibet. SFT was founded in 1994 with a single vision, a vision that there is a world where democracy, self-determination, and human rights can become a reality for all people, including the Tibetan people, indeed facing active genocide at the present time. We have a specific focus on empowering women and youth for advocacy. We've really identified this as key to the movement. Women are being targeted in particularly brutal ways by the Chinese Communist Party, who is very fearful of them sharing their experiences and their perspectives and raising their voices on these issues. So we've seen how coming alongside of them and empowering them to do that is really one of the strongest tools that we have in this fight against the Chinese Communist Party. SFT has worked tirelessly to build a grassroots movement of young people around the world that can make that vision into a reality. One of the ways that we do this is through grassroots training, uh, providing opportunities for young people to develop the skills that they need. So we now have a presence, we're establishing a presence in Canada, uh, in Australia, across Europe, uh, in New Zealand, uh, at the United Nations and beyond. Our work falls into two main categories, in-depth research and advocacy. Over the years, we've published uh, several major reports on the human rights situation in Hong Kong, including on uh, the erosion of academic freedom, the disqualification of legislators, uh, the impact of the national anthem law, the national security law. We've also identified the key role that youth and grassroots organizations play in this movement as they have a certain reach and skill sets that can really multiply the movement and increase the reach and awareness level globally. In 1959, when CCP occupied Tibet, we have seen the situation get from bad to worse and terrible, and it continues to worsen every day. In 2020, Tibet was ranked as the least free place in the entire world, tied only with Syria. Uh, since the past decade alone, we've seen over 150 Tibetans inside Tibet self-immolate. So, what does that mean for organizers, for activists, in order to continue our movement? SFT has worked with young people from around the world to build a system, to build a platform where young people can come together and strategically build power together and fight these campaigns and make noticeable differences for Tibetans inside Tibet and those living around the world. And also a report on why Hong Kong matters uh, to the rest of the world. But those reports uh, are always accompanied by high-level advocacy with uh, government ministers, diplomats, policymakers, parliamentarians, think tanks, media, academics, uh, other NGOs to inform and influence uh, key people uh, around the world uh, for Hong Kong. We've also seen how the CCP has oppressed others, like the Uyghur people, Hong Kongers, the genocide that they've engaged in and the dismantling of democracy. In addition, we're very excited to be continuing to build solidarity with our Tibetan, Hong Kong, and other allies who share this common history of oppression by the Chinese regime. Uh, in 2020, in response to the national security law, uh, we organized a letter by, signed by more than 900 parliamentarians and policymakers from 43 countries as we raise our voices in defense of democratic freedoms and indeed human dignity. We're very privileged to be coming together to do so, to raise our voices, and we're looking forward to, in spite of the challenges of this struggle and the way that it feels like a very long battle, the ways we believe that we will continue to see progress in the next year as we raise our voices as one. And we believe that if we work together, our activism and our advocacy holds more power because the CCP that has been oppressing Tibetans uh, inside Tibet for decades now has also been doing the same to many other people, to Tibetans, to Uyghurs, Hong Kongers. The only way for us to achieve democracy, the only way for us to accomplish self-determination for all is by standing together. When we can recognize the ways that overlooking abuses against one people group have allowed them to be multiplied and increased against other groups, we can also stand together at this very vital point in time and say together, no, not to them, not to us, not to anyone.
Hi, my name is Dorjit Seten, a Tibetan refugee born in India and a lifelong activist. I'm the executive director of Students for a Free Tibet, and it is my honor to accept the Democracy Courage Tributes on behalf of our organization. Students for Free Tibet is a chapter-based network of activists, organizers, and campaigners in more than 30 countries working to advance the Tibetan cause. Through grassroots organizing, strategic campaigns, and nonviolent direct action, we campaign for the political freedom of Tibet and human rights for all Tibetans. Since SFT's founding in 1994, we have trained and mobilized thousands of young people to take effective actions and to promote human rights, democracy, and freedom. The world today is at a historic crossroads as China consolidates its rights as an illiberal global hegemon. It is clear that Chinese government authoritarian practices of censorship and repression endanger people everywhere. Despite these difficulties, though we are building a, an, an unprecedented alliance of nations and people who are committed to struggle for freedom and democracy. Tibetans, Uyghurs, Hong Kongers, Taiwanese, Hong, Southern Mongolians, Chinese democracy activists and other activists around the world are coming together to take strategically and non-violent actions to resist CCP rule. And I'm honored that SFT, my organization, is one of the leading organizations coordinating this global alliance. Although the path to achieve freedom, uh, human rights, and democracy for Tibet may at times seem impossible, but I find solace and hope in the words of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, quote, the cause, the just cause of Tibet will never wipe out. Truth in some time is something that in time gains momentum and comes into light. People may use arms to suppress the truth, but the impact of violence does not last long. In our struggle for the just cause of Tibet, instead of taking arms, we yield to the power of truth to fight for our cause." End quote. It is in this spirit that I call everyone who care for democracy and human rights to never give up our hope that our non-violent struggle can bring change. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to World Movement for Democracy and the National Endowment for Democracy for this great honor. I accept this award on behalf of Campaign for Uyghurs and the Uyghurs everywhere. When we started this organization, it was out of responsibility and obligation to do all that we could to fight for the millions of people who are suffering under the Chinese regime. We designed Campaign for Uyghurs with a focus on young activists and women as the architects of a better world. We know that placing them at the front and the center of this advocacy was key. We are so very proud of the work the women of East Turkestan around the world are doing. They are standing up fighting back, showing the world that their bravery knows no boundary or limit. We continue to fight strings in the young organizers like my fellow honorees in the Students for Free Tibet and the Hong Kong Watch who have inspired the world. They have become the voice of a united movement for human dignity, democracy, and the freedom. Because of this unified movement, we are so grateful to be able to help even more people access the resources necessary to spread the story of our people to every home and the nation. This present fight is for the Uyghurs, but also for the future of the democratic free world. The hope of humanity today then lies within those who have the spirit to resist. We are in the midst of a long challenging fight with the CCP. We can rest assured that though the arc of the moral universe is long, it bends toward justice. This fight demands solidarity. No matter how long, we must push forward and onwards. We know we do not walk alone. 
there will be a bright morning for our people, for Hong Kong, for Tibet, for all. This will come because of activists around the world and the, the generosity of those who help them. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. And now the work continues. My name is Joey Su. Like many other activists and protesters, I fled Hong Kong due to political reasons and I'm currently away from home and could never return. Thank you World Movement of Democracy for awarding Hong Kong Watch the Democracy Courage Tribute. It is truly a pleasure to be recognized alongside three other very outstanding organizations. Hong Kong Watch was founded in 2017 to shine a light on the Chinese Communist Party's violations of promises made under the Sino-British Joint Declaration and the international law to uphold Hong Kong's basic freedoms, rule of law and autonomy. We campaign for a strong coordinated international response to Beijing's crackdowns at Hong Kong. Since Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement broke out in 2019, we have witnessed severe police brutality, the cancellation of democratic elections and the imposition of the Trukanian national security law. From everyday protesters to activists to legal professionals and educators, all dissidents are facing the risk of unreasonable and lengthy imprisonment. Hong Kongers have not only lost the freedom of speech, assembly and free press, but also live under fear of persecution every single day. Hong Kong is a canary in the coal mine, warning the world about the CCP's strategies for control and coercion. And we are watching as the Chinese Communist Party's aggression expands beyond the borders of Hong Kong and China. With growing united front work and red capital infiltrations, Beijing is extending its long arm to every corner of the globe, seeking to remake the international rule-based order in its own image and posing a threat to democracy worldwide. There must be solidarity among oppressed groups. While Hong Kongers continue to live under terror, Uyghurs suffer from an ongoing genocide, Tibetans not able to return to their homeland, and other dissidents face continuous suppression. We hope not only to defend freedom and democracy of Hong Kong, but also to work with our like-minded allies to become a stronger united force against tyranny. Finally, we would like to dedicate the award to the courageous people of Hong Kong who are still fighting fearlessly for values we all believe in. We are proud to walk alongside the people of Hong Kong in the past few years, and we will continue to sail through the waves and storms ahead together. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Hans Stepenhauer, a member of the World Movement for Democracy. I'm here with Gina Romero. We're both members of the steering committee of the World Movement, and we are here today to present the courage tribute to the MSE, the San Isidro Movement in Cuba. Um, as you all know, today, the world is maybe in a difficult place and democracy particularly is being threatened in a lot of countries and definitely Cuba has been without democracy we would say for more than 50 years and we are acknowledging with this courage tribute the big participation of this movement in Cuba who as artists have tried to awaken the conscious in Cuba. And I'm going to leave Gina, who's also a member like me of the Red Lad, the Latin American and Caribbean Network for Democracy, to tell you more about the San Isidro movement. Thank you, Hans. Uh, the San Isidro movement is important because it gathers man many Cubans from different social areas, but mainly artists and intellectuals that have decided to stand up against the regulations that the regime has put in place to limit the artistic expression. 
the most important value that I see in the movement is that it's had, it has in, inspired many Cubans that did not agree on the regime decisions, but felt afraid of doing critics or to act against. The Senecido movement is awakening the youth and families, and this is crucial for the sake of the island's future and for the sustainability of the democracy movement in Cuba. Artists and intellectuals are especially important actors for creating awareness around the freedoms and restrictions Every action that is taken to limit the freedom of expression for actors that wants to be critic to government and to the people in power is a limit to all freedoms and to democracy itself. There are many myths about Cuba, uh, about their, uh, their freedom and about all the supposedly uh, good things that the government has done in these decades. But at the end, what you, what you find is that artists, journalists, and activists have, are being in constant threat and persecution. Therefore, the World Movement for Democracy wants to give a courage tribute to the uh, San Isidro movement, to recognize their terrific value, to encourage their action, to make the movement widely known, and to motivate all the artists in the world to speak up. We are so excited that we can give this tribute to these amazing leaders, to these young people and to this uh, artivist. la campaña contra el decreto 349, organizamos un grupo de acciones artísticas y legales que perseguían derogar este decreto que afectaba directamente a los derechos culturales. Ese día la policía intentó arrestar a varios de los artistas invitados, así como público asistente. Sin embargo, el barrio reaccionó, eh, digamos, evitando estos arrestos. Nosotros, en agradecimiento a, a los vecinos del barrio, es que nos nombramos Movimiento de San Isidro. es el núcleo desde donde parten todas las acciones del Movimiento San Isidro. Eso nos ubica en una línea eh, de resistencia que ha caracterizado a la historia del arte cubano después de 1959. Desde aquel momento en que se fraguó lo que es la política cultural, con la revolución todo, fuera la revolución nada, desde, desde aquel momento entendemos que hay represión hacia la creación cultural, hacia la creación artística y hacia la libre expresión. Y es a través del arte que le damos luz y belleza a lo que vemos que, que está oscuro y que está mal. El arte se convierte en una respiración en San Isidro. No podría definírtelo desde una visión estética o porque es respiración. Es como nosotros nos posicionamos en la vida social y civil cubana. Nosotros nos reconocemos como ciudadanos de pleno derecho y, por supuesto, en nuestro ejercicio diario salimos a defenderlos. Decir que te sientes orgulloso, pero también tengo que agregar que tú sufres por esa pertenencia. No creo que solo a San Isidro. Creo que en Cuba cualquiera que milite, se acerque o se solidarice con una organización que tenga principios un tanto disidentes, creo que sufre.
La injusta sanción de ocho meses de cárcel a un músico de barrio como es Denis Solís provocó la huelga de hambre y de sed el pasado noviembre de 2020 en la sede de Movimiento San Isidro. Este fue el último recurso que encontraron Luis Manuel Otero Alcántara, Michael Oso, Bocaterin Bisque, entre otros activistas aliados del movimiento para enfrentarse y denunciar las arbitrariedades y la impunidad con la que actúa y sigue actuando el gobierno cubano. Quiero luchar por mis obras lo más consciente posible. Al final mi huelga de hambre y de sed es un mecanismo de lucha. Voy a poner mi vida en riesgo para recuperar mis obras. Para mí el arte lo es todo. Mi arte es un elemento vivo. Mi arte tiene que interactuar con la gente. Mi, mi pintura, si entra la gente, tiene que verla y pensar en eso. Y yo, yo no me siento seguro dentro de mi casa. Y eso no es vida. Eso es muerte. Porque te quieren matar y te quieren tener como un zombie cívico apresado como el garrote vivo. Eso no es vida, familia. Prefiero aquí encomendarme al divino, encomendarme a mis amigos, a toda la gente que pueda ser capaz de luchar por su derecho también, porque mis derechos son sus derechos. Ante la vulnerabilidad legal y jurídica en la que vivimos ahora mismo en Cuba, al interior del Movimiento San Isidro ensayamos esa Cuba eh, plural que necesitamos. Por eso yo pienso que San Isidro es un diálogo con la, con la Cuba posible, un diálogo emancipador y un diálogo eh, de acción específica, es la voz que no pertenece solo a San Isidro, es la voz de muchos cubanos, una conciencia plena, puesta y circulando en la vida social cubana. A pesar de tantos años de saturación ideológica, ahora mismo hay una realidad plural, ¿no? Hay muchos grupos haciendo activismo en Cuba desde distintos lugares y eso es algo que a mí me da esperanza. Un futuro inclusivo, un futuro que no cercene más una parte de nuestro pensamiento, que no excluya más una parte de nuestra eh, idiosincrasia, que no excluya más una parte de lo que en realidad somos o lo que podemos llegar a ser, que no, que no reste, un futuro que sume. Buenas, mi nombre es Iris Ruiz, soy activista y miembro del Movimiento San Isidro en La Habana, Cuba, y quisiera hoy, a nombre no solo del movimiento, sino del resto de las activistas, los activistas eh, de la sociedad cubana en general, agradecer por este reconocimiento que nos está dando el Movimiento Mundial por la Democracia. Quisiera también extender nuestra, nuestra voz, eh, aprovechar esta plataforma para que apoyen, respalden y nos acompañen en esta situación de crisis que está viviendo no solo el movimiento, como les decía, sino la sociedad cubana en general. En estos momentos de pandemia, en estos momentos de una profunda crisis económica, de una profunda crisis política, de una profunda crisis social en Cuba, están siendo reprimidos, están siendo torturados, están siendo acosados, están siendo enjuiciados las y los activistas defensores de derechos humanos en la isla. Estos momentos son momentos importantes para que el mundo entienda que la Cuba que ha vendido el gobierno por más de 62 años no es un paraíso de, de, de valores, en realidad es todo lo contrario, es un totalitarismo, es cerrado, es una isla que ha excluido a, a muchísimos cubanos, exiliado a muchísimos cubanos y cubanas, diasporizándolos por el mundo, impidiendo que sus ideas, que, que sus valores, que, que sus propuestas sean escuchadas aquí adentro. El gobierno está utilizando también en estos momentos las redes sociales, está utilizando los medios oficiales de comunicación para difamar, para eh, eh, enjuiciar y para desprestigiar a esa sociedad civil independiente que está pujando 
por nuestras libertades y por nuestros derechos. Quisiéramos eh, extender también nuestro compromiso con el resto de, de los movimientos del mundo que están recibiendo hoy también este reconocimiento y, y que sepan que también los acompañamos en la lucha y que agradecidos, de verdad, eh, gracias, estamos conectados. Hola a todos, todas, todes. Primero que todo agradecer al Movimiento Mundial por la Democracia por este premio, por este reconocimiento. Eh, mi nombre es Manuel de la Alcántara, artista visual, artista contemporáneo, eh, uno, de los, uno, uno de los coordinadores del Movimiento San Isidro, uno de los artistas que está abogando por la libertad de expresión, más que por la libertad de expresión como un ejercicio así abierto. Y, eh, estamos abogando por poder existir en un país, por poder ser parte de, de un sistema, por poder ser parte de una nación, que queremos que sea próspera, que queremos que, que, que haya un espacio para, tu, para todas las personalidades, para todos los, los puntos de vista, para todos los cubanos. Ahora mismo hay alrededor de como 150 presos políticos, pero en especial mi hermano Michael Sobo, mi hermano Esteban Rodríguez y seis personas más, seis amigos más, están presos injustamente. Simplemente por salir a las calles preocupados por un hermano, por un amigo que era yo, que estaba en huelga de hambre y de sed. Yo estaba alrededor de 70 veces un caos por el simple hecho de hacer mi arte, por el simple hecho de que mi arte, mis performances, mis pinturas, mis dibujos, mueven una realidad. Mi arte, el arte que nosotros hacemos en el momento de San Isidro todo, demuestra y asume la responsabilidad del arte como motor impulsor de, de de los cambios en el mundo. Eso es el movimiento San Isidro, es un concepto, es un concepto de amor, es un concepto de paz, es un concepto de, de, de conexión, de conectividad, es un concepto de, de poder aceptar al otro, de poder escuchar también al otro, porque el gran problema del mundo hoy es que no nos escuchamos. Todo el mundo tiene algo que decir, todo el mundo tiene algo que poner, pero nadie da un paso atrás y escucha al otro. Entonces el movimiento San Isidro es eso. ¿Cómo hemos generado una comunidad de poder escucharnos? Gente que no se quiere sentir parte del movimiento, que por afecto nos sentimos súper conectados y por lo tanto ya tenemos la sombrilla de un concepto, que es el movimiento San Isidro. Eso es lo que somos nosotros, amor, paz y luchando sobre todo para encontrar un espacio nuevo en el mundo donde podamos existir todos, todas y todas. Gracias, estamos súper conectados. My name is Michael Chihara, Associate Professor of International Relations at Hitotsubashi University, Japan, and a visiting scholar at Carnegie Endowment for International Peace in the United States. I'm also a member of the steering committees of the World Movement for Democracy and East Asia Democracy Forum. On behalf of the World Movement for Democracy, it's a great privilege for me to welcome you all to this year's World Movement for Democracy's Democracy Courage Tribute. Burma is in a crisis. Since the military coup on February 1st, the legitimate results of the November elections were flouted and the democratic process was completely deprived. With the country hacked by the military, the people launched the Civil Disobedience Movement or CDM, a peaceful resistance movement against them. But the military has crack down on this movement with violence. People overseas are supporting those who have been peacefully protesting the military in the face of fear of being killed or arrested. In my own country, Japan, university students, activists, and scholars have initiated multiple signature campaigns against the coup, took to the streets to raise funds, and launched a crowding, crowdfunding campaign. Parliamentarians unanimously passed a resolution against the coup and have been building relations with the committee representing Pidangsu Floto 
or CRPH, which has formed based on the results of the November elections. None of these international solidarity action would have been possible without information from inside the country. Independent journalists, media organizations, and citizen journalists have been so critical in sharing with the world up-to-date information about what's happening and what people are demanding and saying. They are risking their lives to inform the international community of the injustice and the fierceness of the situation of the Burmese people who are confronting this illegal state of the military rule. With the regular internet shutdown imposed by the military, the role of these journalists is way more important now than ever. According to Access Now, an organization promoting digital rights, people in Burma have experienced more than 70 nights of near complete internet shutdown since February 1st. More than 80 journalists have been arrested since February 1st, according to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, Burma. Many journalists are hiding while continuing their work. Independent media outlets broadcasting licenses have been revoked. With this democracy courage tribute, we recognize the courage demonstrated by these Burmese journalists. Since the day one of the military coup, uh, the first thing what they did was the blockage of the information flow through the internet and mobile connection and also a digital TV channel of uh, our democratic voice of government. ကျမလုပ်လုပ်တဲ့မြစ်စီမှာတင်ထာနာရဲ့ဒီတီဗီချက်နယ်လည်းထုတ်လွှင့်နေမှာလို့အာနာတိစစ်တက္ကနေပြ
ตรีมีเดียบ้านเตี้ยวหนีเนี่ยเลยจรเราบ่ลงจอยู่ขันซาเนาะดีอ่ะวุ้ยทาไปมั้ยเลยจรเราบ่ลงจอยู่เบ้